When we look at momentum, the idea is that I want to try and trade momentum in an asymmetrical environment, Ab. And if I'm going to try and trade momentum in an asymmetrical environment, I'd rather actually have the delta short in the bigger picture behind me. I'd rather have the delta against me. So, for example, if I'm going to trade this as a failed auction at the bottom, and you can see there's a failed auction bottom edge here, would you agree? There's a failed auction. The price does not make the prior lows, and obviously that means that there's a possible play against this key price level here. So if I've got a failed auction here, I would rather see sellers inside that failed auction, because that creates asymmetry above the market, doesn't it? So I believe this area here is going to be asymmetrical above this point. Was I right? It doesn't make any difference whether it was right or whether it wasn't right. The idea is I believe there's going to be asymmetry as we start to go higher out of any of these little price areas. So when we see, for example, a little inside pivot price getting broken here, and we see the volume delta starting to come in buy side, the book delta coming in buy side, and the slippiness starting to come in as well, I don't think you're ever going to lose money on that type of trade as a buyer of you know, even buying it on the bid offer spread. Now, as it turns out, it only goes up by a few ticks, but you would still be able to make, you know, so even if you paid, for example, here, even if you paid 12s, by the time that little punch finished, it was trading up here at 18s. Six points is $180 on a bond, right? That's a lot of money. So I like to find those asymmetrical areas. I like to find those types of trades or especially when we're at a bottom edge you know when we're into a bottom edge those are brilliant because the sellers are already still really hard punching aren't they they're really hard punching but they're starting to get that absorption print if we're now getting the structure in our favor so you can see in this area now we've broken that structure high here we've managed to take a top right hand hold so what i'm now thinking is okay the delta is now positive the delta is now positive, right? So we're not really looking at absorption. We're looking at momentum here. So what we're going to be looking for is if the buyers get too far ahead of themselves, they may well try and run an exhaustion print to buy into the bottom edge. But what happens if it starts getting slippy on the buy side? What happens if we start seeing it getting slippy on the buy side? We go with the momentum on this trade, right? It's not that it's an asymmetrical trade in this occasion because we don't have sellers trapped on this this is just straightforward raw momentum buy side trading and obviously in that type of environment the book's bullish the delta's bullish and the market starts getting slippy on the buy side slippy on the buyer for the buyers i suppose slippy on the sell side because obviously it's the offers that are slippy and you can see that we get this easy money ride out of town here from that momentum narrative. So the story comes back to that kind of point we were making with Andy uh, a couple of days ago. It's a little bit more complicated than just which direction is the line going. It's what's happening in the background for that line. What else is happening? What is the storyline that's been evolving prior to that line taking place? You know, absorption into a bottom edge is an observation. It's not anything else. It's an observation. So we know what kind of trade we need. Once that absorption is lining up, we want to make sure we buy higher. Remember, there's a story to this. Remember, very simply. So if we want to go long and we've got absorption, if we're long and we've got absorption, I want to buy higher, not lower. Yeah. If we've got exhaustion and we want to get long, we want to buy lower, not higher. Because if we buy higher, we are buying into that buying, aren't we? We're buying right in amongst that very busy trade area. So we want to try and buy lower. But obviously, if the buyers come straight back in again, then of course, that's this type of trade here, right? So this is, this is the kind of trade here. 
So in street number one, this street here, that's this street here, right? This is this street here. And this street is that tree there, right? Now you may say there's not very much difference. There is a world of difference. There's a world of difference to this. You know, we're right almost at the top edge when we get that trade on the books. I do not want to be anywhere near the top edge when I get that trade on the books. And the reason why I don't want to be anywhere near that top edge is because it's a really busy top edge. There could be a big faking commercial sitting here selling at this price, selling at this price. If I buy really close to that guy, I'm just going to be adding my order to that stack of buy orders that could easily get swept to the downside. So reading the storyline when it comes up into this area here, if I'm a distance away from it, I'm in good shape. If I'm really close to this trade, I'm in bad shape. So buy lower, not higher. Buy away from the high. Don't join the end of that very busy queue. Don't join the end of that very busy queue. You, you could be buying into a commercial seller. You might not be. Value should suggest otherwise. Hopefully, if you're buying it in the first place, you've probably got bullish value. So you're obviously at least able to make that decision that you're not buying it into a commercial seller at that point. But absolutely, do not buy anywhere near the high in a busy trade. I mean, you think about that simply makes a lot of sense. So for example, in this trade here, imagine you thought about this guy here, right? So just go back a step. Imagine you wanted to be buying into this for whatever reason. You see there's a stack of buyers coming in. You see it's slippy to the upside. You see the book starting to turn around. What is that at the bottom edge here? What is that at the bottom edge here? Exhaustion, right? Yes? Are we happy that that's exhaustion at the bottom edge at that stage? Well, if that's exhaustion at a bottom edge and I do, what am I not allowed to do? I'm not allowed to buy at a high price, right? I'm not allowed to chase this market. So if I did chase this market and I said to myself, you know what, I've got a little ledge here. I'm going to buy if it crosses against that ledge. I'm going to buy if it crosses against that ledge and you put a little buy order right there. You see what happened to you? Busted, right? Busted big style. Because you read the exhaustion at the... If you're going to buy this, if you're going to buy this because you're loving the value, except, except for the fact you're not getting a transition, but if you're going to buy this because you're loving the value, you're going to maybe buy that Voltic, aren't you? You're maybe going to buy this Voltic. Well, could you have got scratch trades on those Voltics? In other words, you saw this exhaustion here. You saw this exhaustion. And if you saw the exhaustion, you buy the bottom edge, you buy the lower prices, you buy away from the high print. You could have potentially have got some scratch trades in here, couldn't you? A little profit and a scratch, a little profit and a scratch, making some progress here, making some progress, right? So therefore, we've got to make sure we read what's been happening so that we don't position ourselves on the wrong trade at the wrong price. If we do that, we could end up getting ourselves into a horrible, horrible, horrible position. Think about this guy here. Remember this trade, how amazing this trade looked? Well, at the top edge here, we could already agree that the bottom edge was exhaustion, right? The bottom edge was exhaustion. So if you're bullish this market, the one place I cannot buy this is where? Well, think about this guy here. This was a buy with exhaustion, agreed? This guy here was a buy with exhaustion. So if that's a buy with exhaustion, would this be where you would buy with that exhaustion again here? This is where an idiot would buy with exhaustion. This is where an absolute doof is going to buy with exhaustion, right? 
Do you agree with that, guys? There's no way you're going to buy at that price. Not a million years are you going to buy at that price. If you've seen exhaustion in that trade, you've just joined the end of a very long queue. So if we understand that that's the case, what happened to the buyer that paid? What happened to the buyer that paid 22s, 23s, 24s? What do you think happened to the buyer that paid 22s, 23s, 24s? This is what happened to the buyer that paid 22s, 23s, 24s, right? This is what happened to that guy there. The price dropped back down to 13s. See that? The buyers that paid 22, 23, 24 into that drive got absolutely melted on that bit of business. So if you're buying with this delta like that, where are you buying? If you are wanting to buy it, if you're bullish this market, where are you buying? Well, you're going to buy probably these guys here, right? You're going to buy into this little fella here, a well away from the top edge, well away from the top edge. And you're trying to swing it back towards the highs. But it's the only place you can be a buyer in this current environment, isn't it? There's no other choices. There's no other options available to you. There is only really one location and one point you've got to try and figure out. How low is low enough? How low is low enough? Is it got to be below this orange, this yellow line here? Is that low enough when we see the book turning, when we see the, the uh, leans coming back in on the Vaultics? Are we good enough to get into that trade? Are we got enough space just in case that commercial seller that obviously sold here, if they come straight back in at 24s? I've got to make sure I can get a trade on and tr get a trade off at 23s, 24s. Some of the front runs 24s, they pay 22s. I've still got to make a profit at 22s on that buy trade, right? I'm still going to make 22s. So it looks good for this buy trade, doesn't it? It looked good for that buy trade, Reeve, right? Looked very good for that buy trade. This guy here. And yet they still got murdered because they overpaid into a very long queue of people. So if we don't see this, I mean, this is a great looking buy trade because you can see just how beautiful that sweep seems to be. Seems to be a beautiful buy trade. But why does it might seem to be a beautiful buy trade? You're still thinking, my God, there's a big seller at the top edge here because if there isn't, how the hell is price still here with that amount of buy side deltas? How the hell is price still in this area with that number of buy side deltas? Doesn't make any sense. There must be a big commercial short sitting just at the top edges of each of these little edges. So you're obviously going to be looking at that and saying, well, I'm certainly not going to be buying into that guy right there. Not a chance. And that's a good thing because you've managed to avoid loss after loss after loss. But guess where most retail traders end up buying? Yeah, I want to buy, I want to buy, Reeve, I want to buy. What happens? They miss the bottom edge because they're waiting for a lower price and then they get in too late on the breakout trade and they're buying right in where that guy is right there. They're looking at the delta and saying, the delta looks fantastic, the delta looks terrible at that price. Terrible at that price. That's the kind of delta that is a commercial seller I'm sitting there smiling my face off at. Because that delta looks brilliant for a seller. Looks, if it's brilliant for a seller, how can it possibly be brilliant for a buyer? You understand? If it's brilliant for a seller, how is it possible to be brilliant for a buyer, guys? It's impossible. That's terrible looking delta at that price. It's great before that price because the commercial will sit above here. The commercial will sit above. They're not going to sit most of the time. They're not going to sit just below the level. They wait for the stops because that brings more buyers in. With that amount of buy side delta, the commercial is going to be smiling and saying, bring it. So we're going to get some buyers at higher prices as well. We love it. So this is incredibly important for positioning your trade properly. And it's a really easy set of rules, isn't it, when you think about it? 
Because every side of whatever side you're trading is going to be the opposite. You understand? Like if I'm if I'm trading this phase instead of trading this phase long, if I was trading this phase so short, you can see where all the trades would be, can't you? Because if I was trading this trade short, then of course this is absorption, correct? It's exhaustion for the buyers, but it's absorption for the sellers, correct? So if that's absorption for the sellers, this is a great sale trade here, right? And if this is the same, when this price breaks that structure, that's a great sell trade for the absorption sellers, isn't it? Great sell trade. And all you're going to do is you're going to lean against, you're going to lean against those orders. And obviously, as soon as you've got a lean, you're able to take advantage of that lean. So whatever side you're on is going to have the opposite almost an equal and opposite trade narrative to lean against or think about. If it's absorption at a top edge, it must be exhaustion at a bottom edge. It doesn't have to be, but nine times out of 10, it will be. Because obviously the delta can swing very aggressively to correct any delta mispricing or any delta uh, bad positioning. So you can start to spot that positioning. And just take a look at what happened to the bond again. Remember I said to you guys just a short while ago, why the hell hasn't the bond exploded north? Remember that conversation? Well, guess what? The bond price just took out the prior high by one tick and immediately sold off again. Look, this was before we even talked up. This was after we'd already mentioned why the hell is the bond not going up? So if you did exactly the same trade, this is obviously exhaustion at the bottom edge. So your idea is to buy it as low as possible. But that's absorption at the top edge. You don't want to buy anywhere here because a commercial is obviously sitting in those areas for whatever reason, sailing into these level twos, into those absorptions at this point, right? And you can look at that and say, brilliant, because you've never been trapped by any of these trades because you yourself have been able to read that absorption, which means absorption, absorption, absorption. We can recognize, remember, we're talking about the long trade being absorbed, not the short trade. Not this, this, this is absorption for a seller, not for the buyer. Remember, we are the buyer on this trade. That's why we highlighted this as a long trade. We are a buyer here. So we're reading this from the buyer's perspective, from the seller's perspective. This is all about absorption selling. All of this whole entire bottom edge here is absorption selling, agreed? With one exception, this exhaustion here. And that's why we swept the stops here in the first place. That was exhaustion selling. If that's exhaustion selling, we sell into the stop run, don't we? So that's the sell into the stop run up here. Exhaustion selling. If it's not going in, guys, we'll cover it in classroom again this afternoon if it's important. I'm sure it is. I'm sure, I'm sure if you're not uh, quite clear on it, then it's very important.